again has to do with termites and I have experienced this firsthand in the hallway there are these winged ants which are which, what, that's what termites look like and yeah, yeah. I was on the phone Roger come take care of this I have winged do. ants winged ants well, that's what they actually yeah, look like yeah that's what they and they, they were swarming and right. they were in the house swarming so I was like oh termites so if you want to talk about that, because I know that's separate from the normal treatment. Different ball game. Different ball game. That's, it's a good topic though, especially in Florida. Yes. All the southeast United States is uh, farther north. And it's not as big a deal. Again, they don't like cold mm -hmm. as much as we were talking about earlier. A swarming termite is the actual. They're called alate. Alates. Proper proper name. It's actually the potential king and queens of the termite colony. And in reality, when you see a swarm, sometimes it's a blessing in disguise. Uh, because otherwise you wouldn't you would know, know you have. I had the no actual idea. workers are kind of little white guys. Mm -hmm. They actually are in the walls. They're they're 24/7 doing their thing, eating your house. Yes, they were. I and will if, show you pictures. And if it wasn't for the swarmers, we may not know you had them. So yes. sometimes like I said, it's yeah. a blessing in disguise. And they differ from swarming ants. They're referred to frequently that way. I know a lot of people make that mistake. Mm -hmm. Ants have a head, thorax, abdomen, with a little pinched waist. Mm -hmm. Termites have a head and what's called a cephalothorax, which is a chest and body combined. Oh, okay. So the abdomen okay. and, yeah. and uh, thorax combined, okay? And that's called a cephalothorax. So when you look, you look at them, and the wings are also the same size, mm -hmm. which is unusual. It gives them this funny flutter that they have, where ants have two separate size wings and they have the, the body differences. Termites need a high concentration of moisture, mm -hmm. hence subterranean termites, they pull the moisture from the ground, unless, you have a what we call a secondary moisture source, a leaky wall, mm. or a, a mm. plumbing access, could be fireplace, could be anything. If that happens, then it can get really bad real fast because they have an extra moisture source to keep them real happy. Treatments have varied heavily since I started my career. Mm -hmm. When I started in 85, 86, we drilled everything the house got drilled, any void there was, we drilled it, we drilled it, and we pumped the chemical in that was repellent mm -hmm. for the most part. Since then, that's all changed. We've gone to what we call now a non-repellent termiticide. Mm -hmm. Termiticides are now designed to interact more with the soil mm -hmm. because termites interact with the soil. Mm -hmm. The way this actually works is termites travel through the soil, they make these tubes and they actually will take a grain of sand and they will they turn around and excrete on it and oh. put it in place. Okay. And they build their build tubes them. this way. That's, how they that's build. what the tunnels were. That's what the tunnels are. Right, right. you see it. They build them that way. Well, they're interacting with the soil. It's the best way to describe this. Oh. We get a product that's in the soil that they interact with that they don't know about mm -hmm. or they don't detect. Then you got a great termiticide. Mm -hmm. And that's where we've gone to. We found in the past that if you had a repellent up, no matter how good a job you did, termites would find a way to get through. There'd be a mm -hmm. gap somewhere. And they could follow the repellent. Now they just go on in and get whacked out and they go, yeah. what's going on? And it works better. Oh, good. And so it's become less evasive um, on most homes too. Mm -hmm.